91.1 The Globe, Globe Media. My name is Tyson, and uh, it's a very special day today because we have a very special guest with us, one of our uh, Globe artists. We play a lot here on The Globe right now. She has a song uh, in high rotation. We'll talk about that later, and an album that just came out. She's with me today, Taylor Ray. Taylor, thank you very much for uh, for taking the time out of your, your day to, to talk with us a little bit. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. Uh, it's really nice to meet you, Tyson. It's good to meet you, too. This is, this is awesome. So, uh, Taylor, we were doing some research uh, for this interview and, you know, looking into you a little bit. And one thing that immediately came up was that you refer to your own musical style as soul and roll. Mm -hmm. So I was I was curious, you know, this is something that I think is, is pretty unique. If you could uh, tell us, I guess, what is soul and roll? Yeah, that term uh, was actually born with my band in L.A. like nine or ten years ago. And at the time we were doing a lot of Southern rock, but it wasn't totally Southern rock. And it, and even now I can say that um, in the album, there's just so many different genres um, of pretty much all roots music and like Americana music. So I thought soul and roll was kind of just like a catchy way to um, kind of just embody the whole vibe of, of what you're gonna see live and what the albums are gonna be like. Yeah, for sure. So Ed, like we said, it's a pretty unique genre. So what artists uh, influenced you in this direction? Uh, and how did you find sort of your voice in this unique style of music? Um, I would say the biggest influences growing up um, in terms of other similar female artists would be Carol King and Sheryl Crow, uh, Nora Jones, Bonnie Raitt and Grace Potter are probably the top ones. Santa Cruz as a whole is definitely a surfer, kind of like slower paced life, hippie town. Um, and then the little town that I grew up in within Santa Cruz County, it's called Ben Lomond and it's in the middle of the Redwood Forest, still like 20 minutes away from the beach. But I think just being around that much nature had a lot to do with the roots element of my music. And just like how vulnerable I can be with the lyrics, um, just being so connected to nature my entire life definitely had a lot to do with it. Yeah, and and this town is so supportive of the arts. Um, in my little town, there was a great musical theater program for children, and so that really got me um, started on stage and doing vocals. Yeah, that's actually a, a great segue into what I wanted to ask you next, which is before we talk about this new album. Um, how did you get started in, in playing music and, and playing instruments and performing too? You touched on that a little bit, but. Yeah, um, I've just been singing forever. It's just always was a passion, even before I knew what passions were. You know, I was like singing before I could talk kind of thing. Um, and so I got started into vocal lessons pretty young, started learning piano. And then, like I said, uh, made my way into musical theater and did that all through high school, multiple productions a year. Um, and then for songwriting, I started writing songs when I was about 12. And um, I really didn't like the piano. At the time, I had been taking lessons for a long time and I just was never passionate about it. So I decided to teach myself guitar so I could accompany my songs that I was writing. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of where it all started. Started playing shows when I was like 15 um, and then decided to just do that for a living yeah. <laughs> forever. Yeah. That's cool. So let's let's talk about your new album now. Uh, it's called Mad 20s. It's your debut full length album, 12 original tracks. Um, what was it like to write for a whole album? Uh, I think up until this point, you had been releasing mainly singles. Um, so how was that different from the writing you've done in the past? And, you know, what are you taking away from that kind of going forward into your next, as you look to your next uh, albums and stuff like that? Yeah, so this one was special um, in the way that these songs were actually collected over the course of my 20s. So um, the oldest song on there I wrote when I was 19, and I'm 28 now. So um in that way, it's kind of a concept album. It's called Mad 20s because it kind of just takes you through the whole journey of this chaotic decade that uh, most of us experience. So um, it was it was interesting putting them together for the album because I sent the producer like 30 songs. 
And, and we chose them together because at that point I'd played all of them so many times. I'd been playing like 200 shows a year and um, they were all very much like established, well-rehearsed songs. And so I didn't, I couldn't really choose. And the 12 that we ended up coming up with together, it kind of turned itself into a concept record. I knew I wanted it to be called Mad 20s, but um, the story kind of wrote itself within those song choices that just came naturally to us. Um, and there's only two songs on there. The last two songs, Wait and See and Taking Space, were the two newest songs I had written. So I had written those within six months of recording the album. And I think that's why we decided to end the album with them, because it kind of like wraps up the story up to that point nicely. So yeah. it was a cool experience. I think um, moving on with the next album, obviously I'm like constantly writing, but there's still so many songs and like a lot of older songs that I would love to record still. So I think we'll see those on the next album too. I'm not sure which ones yet. And I'm sure there will be a lot of new ones on there too, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that all unfolds. Everything up to this point has been so natural the process has just been so organic that I'm just whatever happens I'm going to try not to force force it so yeah we'll see well uh, you you answered a question I was going to ask which is are we going to see some of those other 30 songs because that's a, a pretty unique way of doing it I would say to have 30 mm -hmm. songs you're set you're sitting on that you like I really like these and then to still yeah. wait about you know 10 years before you actually record any of them yeah yeah um I, I knew when I was 21, I wanted to do an album called Mad 20s. Um, I came, that's actually a lyric in a single that I had released called Liquify. It's the first line in that song. It's uh, in our Mad 20s now. And that song kind of just touches on like, oh shoot, we're becoming an adult and this is really hard. And like, I, you know, just feeling so confused and frustrated kind of transitioning into that adulthood. So I was like, you know what? I think at the end of my 20s, I want to do a whole record just with whatever songs I have at that point. So yeah, it was an interesting way to go about it, I think. Yeah. Nice. Well, let's let's talk here now about Home on the Road. It's one of the, the top songs uh, from this album. It's a top song that's playing here on the globe. So uh, simply put, what was what was the inspiration and uh, the the writing process behind this this particular song? So this one, first, I just want to say that "Home on the Road." We almost didn't record it. It wasn't one of the original songs. Originally, it was going to be an eleven song album, and we were in the studio, and everything was going so fast. Like the musicians were just killing it. Like we were making such good time, and so my producer and my executive producer were like, we should just cut one more song. We're already here. Like, let's do Home on the Road. It's easy. It's fun. And I was like, okay, whatever. It's kind of a silly song. And uh, so glad we did that, obviously, because that um, definitely one of my favorites. And then obviously it's the, it ended up being the radio single. But um, with that being said, I wrote that song about driving. Um, at the time I was driving from Colorado to California on I-80 and me and my partner at the time had this um, big black Chevy step van and it's like a UPS truck, but way creepier. And, um, and it, yeah, it's from, from 1979 or eight. I think oh, it wow. says in the song. Yeah. And so it was breaking down all the time, um, overheating. And like, it was a nightmare. It got like eight, eight miles to the gallon or something. Um, and we were already like really broke at the time. I was like 22, 21. So, um, so anyways, we were on our way to California and it overheated for like the millionth time. We pulled over somewhere in Nevada and it was so, so hot outside, like outside of Elko, Nevada, just sitting on in a rest stop. And I started journaling. And in my journal, I had this entry that was basically like, we're stuck in Nevada. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it back to California because we have no money. Um, the van keeps overheating, but there was still a sense of adventure. And um, I knew that it was going to be a really positive memory despite the inconveniences we were experiencing. And so when I got back home, I was rereading that journal entry and I was like, I'm going to write a song about this called Home on the Road because at that point we had built out the van into like a really 
you know, poor excuse for van life um, mm-hmm. living. But yeah, I just thought it was like a really funny story. And so every every line in that song is is accurate. In the second verse, it says, um, we crack a couple cold ones to lift the curse. And really they were warm beers because we didn't have like a fridge or anything, but warm beer like wasn't very poetic. Sure. Um, but yeah, I remember drinking like a warm Heineken and I was like, this is a good song. <laughs> yeah, so in a nutshell yeah that's what home on the road is about thank you guys so much for spinning that one too that's really awesome yeah no it's one that that has fit the station perfectly and it's it's one that everyone really really enjoys listening to that's awesome. um lastly i i think you know uh mad 20s being a, a concept album by your 20s is a really cool a really cool thing and it's about a really relatable relatable topic so i'm curious is you if you would were talking to people who um, you know, we're, we're in their twenties and, and kind of making that transition to adulthood. What do you hope that they can get out of listening to this, this album? That's really just your experiences in your own twenties. Yeah. It's funny how, um, songwriting can connect people because for songwriters, they're such personal stories and we really don't realize, um, how relatable they can be until you release them. And, and, it's, it's a shared human experience, you know, um, something that meant something to me could mean something completely different to them. But I have heard a lot of people tell me like this album has helped me so much get through my breakup, which I find interesting and, and really cool. Um, cause again, these stories are so personal to my life and, and the way I write songs, a lot of it is like verbatim, like what happened, you know? So, um, it's just like, it's just such a magical, magical thing being a songwriter. I, I really hope that people can listen to it and just feel like they're not the only ones having a really difficult, chaotic time during this decade. Um, there's just so many lessons that are learned and like so many different phases you go through and and just like periods of life and seasons that are really hard and like huge learning moments and just tons of mistakes. Um, But it's also a great time to just make all the mistakes too. You know, like when I think about home on the road, I'm like, well, that's kind of, you know, one of the only appropriate times to like live in a van and have no money and (laughs) drink warm beer on the side of the road. You know, like, I guess you can do that at any age, but might be like a little different um so yeah I think yeah I just I hope people can just feel less alone going through this difficult but fun decade yeah well Taylor Ray's new album Mad 20s streaming now on all major music platforms you can also visit taylorraymusic.com for more information about tour dates and other such things going on uh with Taylor Ray also stay tuned uh to the globe and the globe social medias because we're doing a taylor ray promotional that's coming up uh, over the next couple of weeks it's gonna be a giveaway at the end uh, so a lot of cool stuff going on uh taylor thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to to spend with us and, and talk a little bit about this new music that you got we really appreciate thank you so much yeah oh i appreciate it too thank you tyson <laughs>